So we have this, this large extent of layers. We have the lack of erosion between the layers. We have the lack of critters yep. uh, turning this thing over. What other evidence do you see? Well, if we look closely, for example, at the Coconino sandstone, we see within the horizontal layer, we see the bedding that there's bands within it that are sloping. Mm -hmm. We call those cross beds. And what they indicate is that you had underwater sand waves were moving along. The comparison is in a desert. Most people understand a desert with a sand dune and the wind blowing the sand forward. Well, underwater, we see the same thing, sand waves. And so the water current is rapidly moving it along. And what we get left behind are these front facing slopes. And we can estimate the depth of water, the speed of the water current. And we can do this with a Coconino sandstone. In actual fact, it's important to recognize that there's a difference in the angle in a desert dune, it's usually 30 to 34 degrees of these sloping beds. Whereas underwater, it's usually 25 degrees or less. And in the Coconino sandstone, these cross beds are always 15 hmm. to 25 degrees. So it was underwater deposition. Well, Andrew, the Coconino sandstone is a big issue because the conventional paradigm has for years said that this was formed in dry conditions. Yes, it's given as the textbook example and it's held too tenaciously that the Coconino sandstone formed in a dry desert sand situation. You know, those cross beds, everyone agrees that they formed as a result of dunes, but whether it was in air or water is the question. Now, we've examined this issue extensively. Uh, Steve Austin's student, Dr. John Whitmore, has uh, combed the hills around here with his students, hundreds and hundreds of measurements of these cross beds and they all come in the range of 15 to 25 degrees, mm. which is right where it should be with a underwater mm -hmm. sand deposition. Uh, added to that, in, this, in the Sedona area, we find these strange folded units called parabolic recumbent folds. This is where the, the water current was so swift that it turned over the edge of the top of the dune. Kind of like you see a wave when a wave yes, curls? Yes, when a wave curls and crashes. Uh -huh. And we don't see that in a desert sand dune situation. Uh, we've uh, John Whitmore and his students have examined hundreds of thin sections, looking at the grains, looking at the minerals. And all of those features indicate underwater deposition. Uh, you'll be familiar too in the Grand Canyon, there's evidence of little critters that yes, walked- Yes, I've on, seen them. On some of those cross beds. And they're always, going uphill, up the front face. It's as if the critter is getting buried by the water, it's trying to go up. You can see the sky up there above the water and it's trying to get up there. Interestingly, many of these, the claws are at a slight angle to the direction that they're trying to go, means they're bracing themselves in the water current. In some places they've been knocked off their feet and left, right, left, right, and then stops, and then you see it again some oh. distance away. They've been moved across. The other thing, you think about these nice, neat footprints, how would you form them in a dry desert sand? Mm. There's no cohesion behind the sand grains. The conventional paradigm says, oh, well, maybe there was the dew in the morning that held, held enough water. But, but it, that dries out very quickly, and then you get more sand dry sand and it tends to dis distort. These are sharp outlined and it's exactly what you find in wet sand. And so all of these details together cry out wet sand deposition, underwater deposition for the Coconino sandstone. And the speed, as I said before, if you look at these cross beds, you can figure out the depth of the water current, the speed of the water current, the direction of the water current, and we're looking at the Coconino sandstone, average uh, thickness of about 300 feet over an area of up to 200,000 square miles. That's 20,000 cubic miles of sand. At the rate the water was flowing, you would have deposited all that in a matter of days. Not millions of years, just a matter of days.